I Got the Hell Out does contain explicit content that might not be suitable for some listeners, especially small children, or if you are in your workplace. And if you like the show, please spread the word by telling as many people as you can. We'd also appreciate if you would subscribe, rate, hopefully with five stars, and review the podcast on iTunes. You can find us there and also on Stitcher and Overcast. You can find us on Twitter at Was In A Cult, on Facebook at I Got The Hell Out, and on Instagram at I Got The Hell Out with an underscore after each word. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, I'm Debbie. And I'm Laura. And welcome to another episode of I, I Got, Got The, the Hell, Hell Out. Hey, so hey, Debbie, how are you this week? Oh, it's been a week, Laura. It's been a week. Oh, I woke please. up this morning and my house was 41 degrees. Yeah. Oh, please. Why was that? <laughs> um, because my wonderful husband, don't ask me why, he decided to actually shut the furnace off. Um, okay, it, I, I, I'm not going to ask why, because I don't even know if there's an answer to that. And how are there you? <laughs> how am I? My depression is full force. Oh, yeah. I wish I could help you with that. Um, well, no, I'm on a new med, which, you know, everyone out there with depression, yay meds. <laughs> but hopefully in a couple of weeks it'll work and I'll be kind of back to normal, whatever normal is. Normal's just a setting on a dryer. <laughs> In all honesty, we're all crazy. We are all crazy in our own ways. Some of us just are diagnosed, right? Maybe maybe we should diagnose Joe. Who who shuts the furnace off at, <laughs> at the actual furnace Okay, when it's going down to okay. one degree? I was just going to say, and in case everyone doesn't know what our weather is like, it is literally zero degrees. That You pull up the weather app, it is zero degrees. Yes. And there's like a little igloo picture. Yes. So speaking of frigid weather, let's talk about Kool-Aid. Oh, today, um, yeah, we always have a contest. It's called the Kool-Aid Contest. And there's many, many ways to get a hold of us and to submit your adult beverage Kool-Aid um, Stress recipes. on the adult alcoholic yes, version. Usu usually you're not supposed to drink the Kool-Aid at the cult, but we actually recommend drinking the Kool-Aid, and that's why we drink Kool-Aid. Um, okay, so what, what recipe do we have today? Well, this recipe comes from Sherry. She follows us on Facebook, and it is basically vodka and 7-Up, but you freeze your Kool-Aid cubes. Ooh. And that way you have a clear drink that trails out the Kool-Aid flavor and it constantly changes as you're drinking your drink. Well, you know what? And we'll actually post a picture of it because it actually turned out really cool. It the turned ice out cubes very beautiful. are really cool. Yes. It's like, it would be a nice summer drink. Yes, Not right now when it's igloo zero degrees. Yes. All right. I do have a little bit of exciting news okay, today, Laura. What is that? I think I know. I have been, and along with you, we have been invited um, for a live question and answer session um, this upcoming weekend, Saturday the 27th. Yeah, that will be by the time this drops, it'll be the weekend coming up. Yes. Okay. Um, it'll be Saturday, January 27th from 7 to 9. Um, I have been invited to speak about my experiences there. I will be bringing some artifacts for people to look at. I think you're bringing um, some of the stuff you used to wear. Yes, yes. So that will be there on display. And this is in Pittsburgh at the City Theater um, on the south side. That's on Bingham Street, I believe. And we are going to be in the Morris Building, which is the rehearsal hall for City Theater. And I just want to say thank you very much to Debrina and Madison for setting this up. Um, hopefully everyone in Pittsburgh that is listening to this will show up. You can come. Uh, one of the things we were talking about is people were saying, I don't want to go by myself. You can go by yourself. We're friendly. We won't bite. Yes. And if you go, I think it's on Instagram. Um, people are introducing themselves and I think that is just such oh, a Oh, that was Facebook. Idea. No, that was Facebook. Facebook. And I think, yeah, Madison started that and they're just introducing themselves, telling a little bit about themselves. So if you do show up by yourself, it, you feel welcome. Yeah, I, I just simply put, hi, I'm Debbie, I'm terrified, and I'll be the ones telling the stories. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I told about how I am the world's biggest introvert, and I went to some of these with some of the meetups for a, a Pittsburgh true crime group. I went by myself because I figured, what the hell, and had a hey, lot of fun. life begins outside of your comfort zone. Sort of like this podcast, Get, right? Yes, yes, yes. Get the hell out there and be uncomfortable. 
yeah, that story of my life. And you would not, you would be surprised how much happens outside your comfort zone that you go, holy shit, I am so glad I did that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sort of like, again, the podcast. Yeah, I'm <laughs> literally terrified every time I think about this podcast because I'm afraid that that group is going to find out that I'm spilling all their dirty little secrets and hoping that they don't come after me. So for all of you out there terrified about coming by yourselves, don't be. I'm terrified just to be standing up there talking to you all. <laughs> And I'm terrified to be standing up there not talking because who the hell has a question for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> you just you just get to be the eye candy. Oh, good. yeah, exactly, exactly. Great. And, and we'll be bringing our assistant Marie with us. Oh, and we're bringing Kool Aid. Yes. Kool-Aid. Unfortunately, it will not be alcoholic, but it will be Kool Aid. But so we can pretend. We can pretend. So you will be able to drink Kool Aid while looking at cult memorabilia. Yes, yes, yes. It should be a very fun and interesting time. Yeah, it should be. Now, okay, let's go back to the cult. And... Oh, I really don't want to go back there. Please <laughs> don't make me. <laughs> I meant in theory. Yeah. I meant in theory. I did not mean let's physically go back. But I, that was good. The last biggest panic attack that I had. Um, my ex-husband sued me for child support for my 17-year-old son, and I had to go back there. And um, the husband I have now literally was driving me to the gates, and I had the biggest panic attack because he was, dro- shit. He was dropping stuff off to his, his dad, who was still in the cult. And Oh, it- the one that was the reason you went to the cult, right? Or no, 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 no. My this this was this. Oh, was a couple your years current ago. husband. Yeah, my. Oh, current, I'm sorry. Okay, my current husband is also an ex member, and I dated a lot of guys when I got out of the cult, um, but they really don't understand. And a few guys like ridiculed me for spending ten years there. Sort of like, how could you do that? Yeah, how- didn't you have a brain? I mean, why in the hell would you stay there? Why would you do these things? And. Because if it was that easy to get out, I would have. Pretty much. But, um, yeah, my current husband is also an ex-member, which it's kind of like therapy almost because I can talk to him about stuff that happened there, and he knows the And he gets it. Well, he also gets it. Yes. Yeah, because, I mean, even, I mean, how often have I talked to you about this? I don't get it because I wasn't there. You, you can, I can talk to people all day long and you can kind of get an idea of what it was like, but you will never completely understand it until you are actually there living it. Right. Um, it's, I don't even know how to explain it. It's, well, you know what? That's a very good segue into this episode. It's a very different way of life. And <laughs> so that's what we're talking about today. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about basically a day in the cult like from the time you woke up till the time you went to bed what the hell did you do okay so wait let's start with what time was a typical time that you would wake up well see here we go again with things changed over time okay um when we went back to south carolina it was just living normally like we were before we went except we were wearing more modest clothing like, you didn't wear your Daisy Dukes anymore. Okay, yeah, you were saying, I think, was it last episode or something? You were saying, like, the um, like no short shorts, no tank tops right. that were skimpy right. and whatever. Okay. Yeah, we just changed our attire. We prayed three times a day. So, but how about when you woke up? Like, what time would you normally wake up? Or did that vary kind of like it does for um, people? Well, I or... worked for myself, so okay. I just, it was very normal for the month and a half that we lived in Charleston. Because we were just doing the praying three times a day, watching what we were eating or not eating, um, listening to the tapes on the Sabbath, not working on the Sabbath. Um, so it, this wasn't when you, this is... That's the first joint. We went back right, you went to back, Charleston. Right. So how about when you actually moved to the cult? Then let's was, talk about what your day looked like then. It was all still pretty normal back then. Um, but it it always changed. I mean, I had kids. When you have kids, you don't get to sleep past 630 in the morning okay. because they're jumping up on right. you, up and down on your head with the box of Cheerios going everywhere, you know? I, and then when I had my cow, 
I had to get up at 4 30 in the morning. Okay. Well, that's what I was kind of like referring to. So do you, did you have certain, I guess, quote chores that you had to do? So when you had your cow, what was a normal day? Like you had to wake up really friggin' early. I'm I had sure. to get up at 4 30 in the morning and why did you have to get up that early? Well, because cows really, really, really hate flies. Okay. And let me tell you, getting whacked in the back of your head while you're milking a cow with its tail hurts like oh, a son, son of a bitch. bitch. Oh, it oh. hurts like a son of a bitch. And flies, they do not fly around unless the sun is up. They use oh, the, really? They use The flies use the sun as basically a guidance system. And that's why you milk a cow before the sun comes up and right after the sun goes out. No, oh, so you milk it twice a day. You, you milk your cow twice a day. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's really interesting. I don't even, I guess I never even gave it a thought. I wasn't, I thought you just did it when you felt like it. Oh, gosh, no. And your cow would hate you if, you, <laughs> if you're not on a schedule. Oh, my God. Uh, for all those women out there that have breastfed and your baby's cranky <laughs> and you get all engorged in your chest, yeah, the cow will get cranky. Okay. But, uh, yeah, you have to, you start out with, you get your bucket of warm water and you go out to where you milk your cow. Okay. And you get a bucket of grain and you put it in the stanchion. For anybody who doesn't know what a stanchion is, that's the thing the cow puts her head in and you lower the bar. And it's like a sort of like a guillotine type. Sort of, yeah. Okay. And, it, and it keeps her from moving. Um, and once she's in there, you my personal cow didn't like to be milked. So you would have to tie her one leg back. Uh -huh. Um, so she didn't kick you? Yeah. Well, you just put the loop around it and pulled the twine through it, and then you just tied it to the back of the barn wall. Okay. And she could lift her foot up, but she couldn't bring it forward because, like, let me to tell kick. You, yeah, I forgot to do that the very first time I milked her, and she kicked me in the head, and that was no fun. Oh. Yes. It hurt like a sum of a bitch again. Okay. But after you do that, you, you wash the udders down. You got wash rags and soap, and you make sure her udders are all clean, and then you milk her. When you're done milking her, um, wonderful product called Bag Bomb that you put Oh on my there. gosh, you know what? I actually use that. I used Bag Bomb on my children for diaper rash. It was the best shit I have ever used. It is I the best stuff. It. I swear to God, it's the best stuff for dry hands, especially yes. in the wintertime. Yes. Like you put it on before you go to bed. It's medicated it's really Vaseline. Oh my God, it is amazing. It, it is medicated Vaseline is what it is. Um, and don't let anybody dissuade you. Oh, that's for animal use. Oh no, oh, best yeah. shit ever. It is. It really is. But now you've got this pail full of milk. So you have to go in the house and you get your one gallon, um, glass jar that is sterilized from the day before. And you put layers of cheesecloth over it and you put a gum band on it. Okay. Um, gum band. Yeah. Yeah. yeah gum band. <laughs> Rubber band for all y'all out there who don't know what a gum band is. Anyway, um, you have to strain the milk through the cheesecloth because you do have bits of hair, dirt. Um, oh, oh, I never thought of that. Just like stuff from in the just barn. From, yeah, just the stuff from oh. her coming like off of her sh off of her chest because okay, you're right. only washing oh, the wow. udders clean. Okay. Um, and then after you strain the milk, you put it in the refrigerator, and you get the most wonderful cream on it. But anyway. Um, yeah, then about the time I'm done cleaning up from milking my cow and stuff, and this is later in the cult, um, that's when you'd have to start making your bread, making your butter, your kids get up, and you can't call them kids. They're always children. Why not kids? Because kids are goats. Okay, and but now goats are forbidden? Well, Or just they didn't want to be referred? Um, to yeah, you, you can't refer to your children is kids because it's their goats and something biblical about the lambs will go to heaven and the goats are going to hell or I don't some, know. yeah some kind of crap some like that. crap crap okay crap. okay so your children yeah <laughs> uh, they get up and um i'd have to homeschool them because they weren't allowed to attend public school now was this the whole time ever since they were born or did it change um, when we first moved there, we did not have children, and the kids actually did go to public school. Okay. Um, not your kids, but the kids that were there. The kids that were already in the cult. Okay. Um, it changed later on down the road before my kids even got the chance to go to school, because imagine you're in first grade, and you're talking to your best friend in school, and the teacher overhears you telling your best friend that... 
your mommy's very sad because your daddy now has three wives. Oh, okay. Man. And these kids weren't trying to get anybody into trouble. They're talking, they don't know any better. They're talking about right. their everyday life. Right. And it ended up being, I forget the word they used, but they had everybody take their kids out of school so that these things couldn't be overheard or talked about. Right. Now, when you started doing the homeschooling, I know that now there's some kind of, I don't know if there's like a testing, but you have to be approved essentially yes in the state that we were in all you had to do was say i'm homeschooling my child like if your neighbors saw that your kids weren't going to school okay and called and said you know hey my neighbor has children and they're they're home all day why are they not in school right they would send somebody to your house and all you literally had to say was i homeschool my children and slam the door in their face okay so no offense but what the hell were you teaching them? I mean, if you are not, I mean, teachers have to go to school for a long time. How do you teach your kids if you're not trained to do that? It's very difficult. Um, when I did finally leave, I had been homeschooling my kids on the computer with the fun animated games okay. and learning their letters and colors and numbers and... I thought I was doing pretty damn good until I went to enroll my son in second grade. And they did testing on him because he had never been in school before. And And this probably, like you said, anyone could homeschool their kids. So this probably wasn't too much of a... I mean, were they used to homeschooled kids coming into school? No, not really. No, no. But um, he was in second grade and he tested near the end of fifth grade in science. Nice. Because I love science. Oh, and we gotcha. Would, we would do experiments, and I love animals and plants and the outside world. So a lot of that is what I taught. He was kind of focused on that. Um, he only, he was remedial in writing because I never worked with him writing. Oh, okay. And when he finally did go to school, a lot of his problem was, I'm, again, not a teacher, so he had pretty much all day to do his assignments. If he wanted to stare out the window for a half an hour... Gotcha, okay. He knew he couldn't get up from where he was until that paper was finished. So it wasn't like when you're in a regular school and you have, like, what, a 50-minute period? Right. Okay. So when he finally did end up going to school, he had a lot of trouble adjusting because of the way I was doing it was so completely different to what regular public school. Okay. So, yeah. Did it take a while for him to adjust, and how did that turn out? Oh, to this day, he really never did adjust to school the way I think he would have if he had been able to go since kindergarten. Okay. He To this day, he still hates to handwrite anything. His, oh, his, wow. He, his writing looks like it's in first grade. Um, so, yeah, day to day, I'd have to homeschool my kids, feed them. Uh, and at first you didn't have to make all of your own food, right? No. Again, okay. that, that slowly changed throughout the years. But if you wanted bread, you better know somebody to either trade with or make your own. Now, this was towards the end or the beginning? The end. Okay. The end whenever they had taken the milk away, the eggs away. They took just about everything away. And then they would turn around and sell it back to you. For probably a buttload of money. Yeah, back in, when I had my cow, milk was going for $5 a gallon. Holy hell. And I sold mine for four because that covered... Oh, nice. That covered the feed and the hay, and I really didn't feel like gouging people. Right, but you still made some. You still made some money, though. No, No? we we, we just broke even. Um, Like I said, you have to buy hay, and you have to buy grain, and my cow gave between... Two and three gallons of milk a a day. A day. And we were big milk drinkers. And I'd still end up with, you know, two gallons that I'd have to sell every day. But you can't sell milk because that's illegal. Oh, but but they could though, right? Well, no. No, no. Or did you have to exchange it? You were buying the jar. Oh, for God's sake. Yes, the milk came for free because they can't sell you So you're buying a $5 jar. Yeah, you're buying a $5 empty Pickle jar. Oh, my God. I love how they get around this. They get around everything. 
even down to working on the Sabbath. They have people volunteer mm. to work in the cafe. He, they're not actually cooking the food. They're just heating it back up or making sandwiches. But you, but you know, God forbid you did that, right? Right. You can't. Well, you cook your food the day before. Okay. Because every day is different. Like if, and we didn't go by the days of the week. We didn't say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday. It was first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, prep day. Oh, Sabbath. Oh, get it. So Friday, Friday would be prep day, right? Yes, and okay. Friday night at sunset would be the start of the Sabbath, and you could not... Sunset cook. or sundown? Sunset. Sunset, sun. okay. Sunset, yeah, as soon as the sun goes down, and we knew to the freaking minute, okay, it's 6.15, Sabbath, drop what you're doing. Oh my God. Yes. No TV, no... So it just really depends on the days of what you would have to do. And prep day is the day all you, you do all your laundry, you do all your cooking, you... So was it kind of like, I know like way back when my grandmother, like in my grandmother's time, she had these tea towels that, I don't know if you ever saw them, there was like Monday and they had this cross stitch of whatever yes. chore was done on Monday. Then there was one for Tuesday and there was a, you know, a cross stitch of the chores for Tuesday. Is that kind of what it was like each day of the week had their own kind of chores or just for the Sabbath prep? Just for the Sabbath prep. That was, okay. and, and on the Sabbath, you, it was very different because I personally, I had two little kids. So I had to wake up early and get everybody ready to go to services. Okay. And you get to services and it's kind of like a college lecture. It's so fucking boring and I did learn a lot, but anyway. Um, and then after services, sometimes you'd be invited to somebody's house to go and have lunch with them. We used to host a lot um, at our house. And after everybody eats and is cleaned up, then usually the men go home to take naps. Oh, and the women get to do the cleaning? And... The women get to stay up with the kids and stuff because who's going to stay up with your kids? And Day of Atonement sucked. Day of what Atonement is, sucked what fucking is, ass. <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't even, wait, Day of Atonement, is that like one day of the week or is that one, what is that? That is one day a year that nothing passes the plane of your lips. You are atoning <gasps> oh my for God. all your sins. So you're like fasting all damn day? Yeah, and you can't even have a, a drop of water in your Oh mouth. my God. Yes. It's, it's 24 hours. It's from... Oh, and, damn. Um, if you're Jewish or no Jewish people, it's called Yom Kippur. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, but, of course, we're in the cult, so it's Day of Atonement. We're atoning oh, for our sins. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But, again, I don't like to follow rules. It sucks shit, so I would go into the bathroom and drink water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you rebel. You had water. Well, you know, Kenny wouldn't get out of bed until, like... Five minutes before we're supposed to leave for services. Okay. And, of course, you sit miserably through services. You don't... Nobody wants to be there. And then when you get home... You're probably friggin' starving. You're starving. You're thirsting to death. And you're not even supposed to smoke cigarettes. Nothing is supposed to pass the plane of your lips. And... he, You, you come home from services on Day of Atonement because it's a high holy day... And, and, and your husband goes to bed because that's the easiest way to get through it. Right, oh, right, right. But you're stuck with the kids. And I, I yes. Now, and wait, oh, whole question here. Did the kids have to fast? It depends on the family. Okay. Um, most people would start making their children fast at the age of six. What the hell? How do you explain that to a kid? They grew up there. They watched everybody do it. They listened to everybody bitch moan and complain. Oh my gosh, David Tolman's coming up. I'm going to die. Yes. And uh, I'm like trying to think of what to say. I mean, six years old? Six years old is when they put them to work, too. That's Jesus. when um, if you're a boy and your dad works like in one of the orchards or the fields or with the cows or the fish hatchery or wherever. Whatever. Okay. The day you turn six is the day you start going to work with your dad. When you should be out on the playground or you yes. should be. Yes. Wow. And most of the children out there, they don't have an education. Um, my nephews, I felt so bad. I still feel bad for my one nephew. He, he was in the 10th grade 
the third time they held him back, he just quit. The what? Tenth grade. But how many times did they hold him back? It was going to be his third time oh, in tenth man. grade because he didn't want to go. He hadn't. His mom never homeschooled him. She said she did, but there were a lot so of people. So this poor that just, kid just went to work with his parents, his dad, whatever, and never had an education. Um, actually my brother-in-law, he worked in a nursing home. So, okay. He, so my nephew really couldn't go to work with him because he oh, didn't, gotcha. he didn't okay. work for the cult. Gotcha. Okay. Um, it was it's the people that work for the actual cult. Gotcha. Um, now say you worked in the canning room. Okay. okay? I'm your daughter. Okay. I'm six. I am expected to now be either go to the canning room with you and work or um a lot of the girls were dropped off at what they called the butter house in which all they did all freaking day was make butter oh dear so, god so that so, the store could sell and i i don't even remember how much they sold it for a pound because i made my own butter oh my god so this wasn't like like take your kid to work day when the no. kid went there and they colored all day or no. something so i mean the kid actually worked yes yes and from the age of six on, they, they're they expected to work. And I had to go to the press room one day for something. And I went in the back where the ladies were working. And it was the first time I had ever been back there. And I saw babies in cardboard boxes laying next to their mother while their mothers assembled um, the books or the pamphlets. Like all the propaganda crap. Yes. they They didn't even have like a proper playpen or a pack and play they were they put the babies in a cardboard box so it's like the, the kid was in the way basically is what it sounds like a little bit like um but they had no choice right they, they had, had no, no choice, choice yes. okay it, because they had to take their baby with them to go and make their 40 dollars a week for working 40 hours wow yeah if you work for the cult they pay you a dollar an hour and then you still have to tithe off of that I don't honestly know how some of those people survived. I'm sure I mentioned I knew a woman who basically survived on ramen noodles. I was just going to ask, how do you live? Ramen how noodles. How do you live on that? Rice, the cheapest foods that you can find. Or you barter with people. I'll clean your bathroom if you give me a meal. Right. So apparently minimum wage meant absolutely nothing. Right? Oh, they actually got busted one time by the labor board. Nice. But do not know who turned them in. But they claimed everybody that was working there was a quote unquote volunteer. They were volunteering their ah. time. But of course, the labor people wanted to know, well, why do you have a time clock here where these people nice. are punching in and out? Nice. Nice. Because well, volunteers don't punch it in. Right. right. Volunteers do not punch a time clock. And I don't know how they got out of it. Money buys you everything. Right. But they were told that they had to pay a certain amount of people that were there every day minimum wage. Nice. And How did that go over? Um, That went over extremely okay because that shows, really? that shows that more of their money is flowing out. Okay. Now, the people that were getting the dollar an hour that were now suddenly getting minimum wage, right? they had to sign a vow, okay? And if you break your vow, the ultimate, uh, it's death. You're, you're, you're going to Shaul. You're going to the grave. Wait, what's that? Is that hell? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but they were paid minimum wage. And then they signed this vow okay. that when they cashed their check... They keep $40 and return the rest of it. To the cult. Yes. And that's probably wow. still going on to this day. Wow. So that was the way to legally get around it. They get around a lot of shit. Oh, my God. So so basically the minimum wage meant absolutely nothing. On paper, they're getting rid of more money. There's more money going out. But well, they're getting that money right but back. But they're getting it right and back. And it's not accounted for. It's... It's like it's being laundered. Ta it's tax-free money. Yeah, it's laundered through their own employees who they're forcing to work for a dollar an hour. Oh, my God. Yes. It's one of their mottos was, it's not a religion, it's a way of life. Oh, there's a t-shirt. That's a t-shirt. Oh, my God. Um, oh, God, that would be too fucking creepy for me. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I mean, what, that, that's like this, that's like some totally fucked up slogan. It's not a religion; it's a way of life. Which, in your head, mentally, you're preparing for the kingdom. You're preparing for the end of the world. Which was what a year from then, or two years? It or was what? always three and a half years. Three and a half years. Oh, okay. Three and a half years. And the three and a half years never came. Obviously, my ex is still there, and he's been there for 24 and, years now. And we're still here. Uh, yeah, I've lived through the end of the world predictions, I think, five times now. They were actually responsible for a lot of deaths in, I forget what third world country, but they have a following over there. What? And it was supposed to be the nuclear baby, and I don't know if it was Nigeria or where the hell it was. I was surprised that we had a following in this country when I found out about it. Um, now, did people from this they country... They killed themselves. What? They, they sold all of their possessions because it was supposed to be the end of the world. Right. And they all gathered in this one little room and they they made the um, fallout room like okay. you're supposed to with the plastic okay. and the duct tape and the whole nine yards. They forgot to put ventilation in. You have, oh, they, they forgot shit. They forgot a way to put fresh air. So they didn't mean to kill themselves. No. It was accidental. Oh, they were waiting out the nuclear blast. Yes. Oh my god. I think I have a newspaper article downstairs somewhere with that because I did save just about every article that. Were oh in. my god. Um. Yeah, they're responsible. Was that? For a lot do you know? Was that? Was that in the news a lot, or was that just like a local paper? Or no. Um. Because that is messed up. I forget how I even heard about it. I don't even, I, I don't know. I, I don't remember. Now, had you, I know you said people from all around the world would come to the feasts. Yes. Did you meet any of these people that you know of? Uh, the ones that died? Yeah. No. I, okay. No, I don't think any of them had ever made it to the United States. So then how did they know about the cult? How, if they've because never. they send their stuff out everywhere. Oh, all the propaganda crap. Yes. Okay. Like when we left the first feast that we attended, we were given a box full of propaganda, ranging from business cards to pamphlets to you name it. And we were told that anytime we stopped to go to the bathroom, get something to eat, groceries, right? Like put these under people's windshield wipers. But I'm talking about like a different country. I mean, that's, you know, your well, area. Did they flew, actually mail them or how did they get to a totally different country? I'm not sure. I I really don't know. But I've met people from Tobago and Trinidad. I've met people from the Australian family. They were a hoot. I wish they would have come back. But they had been saving for six years to come. What? So oh, so they didn't come to every feast. They just no. came to one. Yes. Oh, my God. So they, that was the vacation they were saving for. They would love to be there three times a year. Damn. Can you imagine six people, what airline tickets no, for I can't six even imagine. would be? I can't imagine, no. But they did. They had saved for six years to come to that feast. And then I never saw them again. Oh, my God. So I don't know if they woke up. Um, I know that when I had to go to, yeah, um, my ex made a lot of money. So, of course, we were the ones that were picked to go to Israel to spot the green ears of barley on Mount what? Zion. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is that? What, what's the green ears of barley on? What is that? Um, do you know what barley is? It I, pops. Makes good beer. Ass. Yeah, I do. But why were you going over there to look at the barley? Because that's how you set the feast days. You, it goes by the moons. Okay. Um, the new moon. Right. I get that. You, you have to... Because it's in the Bible, Laura. Don't you know you have to do everything in the fucking Bible? I thought you said you can't say Bible. Oh. Yeah, ha ha ha. Damn it. Yes. It's a scripture <laughs> book. You have to do. Bible is pagan for all you out there. And we, we went to a sanctuary, not a church. Like, even so, words. Oh, so, okay. So, wait. I get the whole moon thing. I get that. So, you had to go look for specific barley? Yes. And I had to, and I had to go... And be on Mount Zion when I found these green ears of barley. And what did you do oh, when you found them? I, and, and my ex-husband was the one that broke whatever international law that you can't bring fruits and vegetables and produce. <laughs> he, 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 because you can't bring the green ears of barley back. You, that's against the law. Right, right. Well, he wrapped them up in a, in a, in a, in a, 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 a oh, geez, a, a document or something. Okay. And we smuggled them back in. But while we were in Amsterdam on our layover. 
we were leaving stacks of literature or cards or oh okay so here we are at a layover in Amsterdam and we're exposing people <laughs> to cult and cult stuff oh god okay and the same with over in Israel we'd leave pamphlets places business okay. cards and I'm sure other people have done the same thing. Oh, so that's how. Okay, so that's how it could get to different countries. Well, not only that, the magic magic of the internet also. Okay. Or imagine you emigrated from this country, but you still have friends and family back home. Gotcha. And you're like, oh my gosh, look at this! I'm going to send you some literature, and you send it back home to your friends and family. So it kind of gets spread out everywhere. Okay. All right. Now I want to go back to this barley. I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm sorry, but I, I'm sorry, but you went over to Israel to look at some fucking barley. Yes. You smuggled it back home. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, the sorry. Ex did. Your ex I had smuggled nothing. It. I just had to spot it. Okay. So your ex smuggled in barley. Yes. Now, what did you guys do with the barley? I mean, was it, did you make something with it or they, was it on display? Or it's, on dis- it's on display. And I don't know if they keep it from year to year, frame it. Who, who what the fuck? Like a spotlight on it? I I don't know, but yeah. Um, so wait, somebody has to go every year to get new barley? Every year. What do you do with the old barley? I don't know what they do with it. Maybe they make put it with some hops and make some beer. I don't know. Okay, I'm just wondering. I have not a clue what they do with it. Um, well, what else did you... So did you go to Israel just for barley, or yes. did you have some other reason? No, every year they send somebody over there to spot the green ears of barley. And like I said, Kenny made a lot of money. So that's why you were picked. That's why we were picked, because we had to fly ourselves there, fly ourselves back, and pay for everything. Oh, wait, whoa, whoa. So the cult didn't pay for you. cult didn't pay one oh, damn dime. get out. So they were just kind of like, you need to go, and you need to pay for it. Yes. Oh, what bullshit. Well, actually, we were picked to go. It's an honor to be picked. Because you can afford it. Right. Okay. And they wouldn't pick somebody who had no money and couldn't afford it. Okay. Did you at least get to do anything fun? When you were over there? Or did you just go get the barley and, like, hightail it back home? No, we spent, um, I think we spent about a week there. And if you ever do visit Jerusalem, um, there's going to be a lot of people with camels. Okay. Going, would you like to take a souvenir picture on my camel? Oh, my God. You you can get on my camel and take your picture for free. (laughs) But then they ask for a donation, probably. Well, yeah. um, Luckily, we were warned because my dumb ass would have jumped up on a freaking camel in a heartbeat. Do you know how (laughs) tall camels are? I do. I can honestly say I do not. Okay, great. Well, once you're up on this camel (laughs) that you're going to break your damn legs if you jump off because they park their camels on the cobblestone streets. Okay. So you can't even jump off the camel. Do they have like a step ladder or something? No, the camel kneels and oh get out yes okay and that's how you get on and off well camels are pretty damn tall now once you're up there and, your and you're, you're, like, taken, are you like sitting like on the hump or are you sitting like by its neck i didn't get on the camel because they charge you to get off <laughs> <laughs> it is completely free for you for, for you to get on this guy's camel he's more than happy to let you on the camel but he won't let you off unless they you ransom pay. you to get the fuck off of it Yes. Oh my god. So you're stuck on a camel unless you now obviously they wait till you say, Okay, let me down. And what are they like? Okay, it'll be five dollars. Like, oh my god. Five dollars. I'm sorry, but that's like one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Yeah, they they well oh yeah. It's it, it, it's very different being in a different country like that. And Oh my god. We were warned about a lot of things. Uh, me and my mother almost got um kidnapped. Okay, please tell. Uh, my ex was sleeping on the Sabbath and we went to go wander around the old city, which it has dark tunnels and everything's connected and it's really weird if you've never been there. But, uh, this guy comes walking up to me and he goes, Ooh, are you American woman? Oh, shit. And I was like, yeah, how do you know? He goes, Oh, you smoked a cigarette. He goes, only American women smoke cigarettes. It is a dirty habit. Only dirty American women smoke cigarettes. But come in my shop. Come see what I have. Okay. I'm insta- what? I'm instantly creeped out by this guy. Okay. Okay. And me and my mom are in the shop, and I'm getting that heebie-jeebie, and he, he's trying to find out what I like. And da, 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 da. What kind of shop was it? It was jewelry. Okay. So then he's telling me, I can custom make you anything. I can make you anything. Even though you're a dirty American that smokes. Pretty right? much. Okay. 
And then what made the ding, ding, ding go off was, I can make you anything, and, and you let me know where you're staying, and I can oh, and bring no. it to you. Oh, hell no. Hell no. Well, at some point, I'm, I'm getting edgy, and I want the hell out of there, and I'm nudging my mom, and the guy comes up and asks my mother, I have to go and see my cousin or my brother or whatever he said. He said, can you watch my shop for me for just a few moments? What? Yes. Wait, so two total strangers are going to watch his shop, which is a jeweler, jewelry yes. shop. Yes. Which with a bunch of jewels. So leaving, oh, he, sh- what the fuck? he walks out and goes to the left. Okay. I grab my mother and start dragging her to the exit. Did she have any clue she that this looked, was messed up or no? No. She looked at me and went, we can't go. We're supposed to be watching the shop. And I'm like, <laughs> we're getting the hell out of here. Oh, my God. So we took off running to the right. And it's, it's like the old city of Jerusalem is a maze. And is it like those little tiny streets yes, and stuff like that? Yes, okay. yes. He took off to the left. We took off to the right. And we're running. And... Couple turns here, couple turns there. We end up in an open air courtyard where it was almost cartoonish as I'm trying to backpedal because oh my God. Cause I see the dude talking to like three or four other dudes. Oh no. And we locked eyes and all of a sudden he started yelling in a foreign language and pointing at me and my mom. We Well, it's because you're supposed to be watching the store. I think they were gonna try and internationally kidnap us. Oh shit. I, I, that's the only thing I could think of. Oh, that, and we got surrounded by people, um, 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 and on, on the Temple Mount. Okay. They were uncovering, um, oh gosh, I forget who. Anyway, we were filming something we shouldn't have been filming, so they had, uh, four really big dudes with machine guns come up and try and confiscate Whoa, my film. wait. My life is always what? exciting, Laura. <laughs> wait, wait, machine guns? Yeah. I, I still have that tape, um... If anybody out there knows a foreign language and would like to translate it for me, I'd love to know what they're talking about on my confiscated tape. Maybe they're like, all oh, these stupid Americans. <laughs> I have no idea, but uh, yeah. Be careful traveling abroad, guys. You never know what's going to happen to you. Holy shit. Yeah, and don't watch someone's store for them. Well, what's really weird over there is when they graduate and turn 18, okay, they are required to be in the um, Israeli army oh, for two right. years. Oh, that's right. Okay. So my, I did know that. My first walking around of Jerusalem was like, oh my God, why are all these teenagers have machine guns on them? And Because they're always required to have their weapon. Oh my God. Yes. This is supposed to be about day-to-day life and we're talking I about know, green, I know. barley. I'm like, wait, what the hell? Now you're in Israel with machine guns and barley. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. So going back to the cult. As always, we kind of digress off of the original topic. What, you, Debbie? You going off topic onto something else? No. I don't even know what to say about that one. But yeah, we usually do go off a topic. It was supposed to be about everyday life. And I did cover some of it, but... Well, we can always go back to it. Or you can pick out a topic for next week. Oh, Which you tried to do, but no. Yeah, you yelled at me. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we got the the Kool-Aid picture here. Okay, pick out a topic for next week. Okay, next week's topic is going to be Satan is a woman. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Okay, so get ready for that. Yeah, so next week's episode, Satan is a woman. Oh, my God, is this going to be great. What do you have to say right off the bat about Satan being Um, a woman? I was called Satan's sister uh, as my children were saving my soul, burning my slut clothes. (laughs) Slut clothes. A sleeveless shirt is slut dress hair. You whore, I'm you. a hussy whore. <laughs> yeah, my children d- jump, uh, dancing around the, the 55-gallon burn barrel. We're saving mommy soul. Oh, my God. We're Do you by any chance have pictures of that? I was too pissed off. Oh, son of a bitch. You should have been thinking about I, a future podcast. You know that? I, I was thinking I got to get the hell out is what I was thinking. <laughs> I come home to... I think I had filed for divorce by then, and he was just doing all kinds of shit, and I guess he thought he pissed me off by burning oh my, my Satan's sister's slut clothes. Oh, my God. Yeah, Satan's a woman, according to these people. Oh, my God. I cannot wait to talk about that next week. Yeah, and if you all have any questions or would like me to expound on anything from any of the episodes that we've already done... 
feel free. You can um, send us your questions a, on our Facebook page. Or, oh, you know what? You can also do it on the website, which is igotthehellout.com. There's a section on there that you can email us questions and... We'll give you a shout out. Absolutely. We uh, sometimes, we did one show. I can't say sometimes. Well, we are planning on doing some shorter shows. It's just um, questions that y'all have that you might have, want me to expound on something. Okay. So send them in uh, through Facebook and again through our website, igotthehellout.com. And other than that, if you are in a bad situation, if you're uncomfortable where you are, if you need to get the hell out, get the hell out. All right. Well, until next time, guys, uh, happy to talk to you. All right. See you next week. Bye. Bye.